and he will know then that he's been a good dog he gets made a fuss of don't try doing anything else until you've got that one right and when it's had its session of training such as lying down stay there and you go back to it then you let it have a little bit of fun let it have a little run on on the length of the line and enjoy itself for five or ten minutes take it back and let the puppy think what it's all about by putting it back into its kennel and shutting it up not letting it run around with the other dogs uh, it uh, it's forgotten all about what it, you've been out with it but if you take it back and let it go into the inside it's like a human being it goes goes back all over what what you've been trying to teach it and I think uh, puppies learn a lot that way and a lot lot quicker I have this uh, puppy it's just six months old I have the pair of them actually there's a dog and a bitch puppy and uh, at this age tender age of six months they're uh, very friendly very very playful but there was a time for them to change all this playfulness into starting to learn uh, like a five-year-old going starting school he's got to start learning his uh, lefts and his rights and his uh, uh, attraction to sheep he's not been allowed to go and uh, play about with sheep or anything of that by his early age he's probably seen them and uh, he's seen the old girl working them out in the fields for which the puppy will of course uh, take a strong eye on this if he's a good bred puppy uh, it's a lot of instinct that they want to get out there and do some work which we which we look forward to see what they're going to do when I start off this puppy around uh, about six months of age I've got to go and see if it is ready for training you see a, a lot of these pups here uh, go out and, and, and want to work and they get at it and try, run around the sheep and all that if they had the chance well I have a small pen what the dogs run in where I can put a few sheep and take this puppy down and let it uh, go in there and I shall see what the reaction is to the sheep when it's on its own now I like starting this off on my own without any people or other dogs about because that puppy has got to listen to me and not attracted by other dogs or other people or any implements working I like to be right away on my own uh, a lot of people they don't uh, don't do this that's my method but um, when the puppy gets down there and I'm watching to see if it's going to rush in at the sheep uh, if, if the sheep were loose down at the bottom which they would be he'll, he'll try and run round them he'll either lay down and watch them what we call clap down and won't know what to do well all these need a little different schooling and when you uh, come to start on them this is what you're doing by taking them down to have a look at the sheep as I call it when they've, um, when they've had the look you've made up your mind that uh, this one well it's going to be a puppy that's on its feet and uh, it stands and stares at the sheep well you'll know how to uh, control that later on in life but for the moment you just uh, let it go and have a look at those sheep and you've got it on a on a lead that's after I've added out loose and loose sheep in a very very small pen well then the next thing is uh, I pen a few sheep up these that you see here uh, is uh, the old ewes they're used to dogs around them so they don't get worried and it does two, uh, two jobs by penning the sheep is you're not scaring the sheep and they're not being raced all over the place they've got the pen and the puppy has walked up as you see and it is allowed to stand and have a look and uh, I'm the side that it's standing of me is either the left or the right well if it's standing on the left I turn its head and I walk push my near side its head and walk with it to say alright come by that's my left hand command and I'll try and let that puppy either want to walk round, creep round, gallop round or go do what it do what it wants but I will not check it in any way or form I won't upset it there I want to go and see if that puppy is going to go round and take that interest in the sheep and that it wants to work and if that is the case right well we'll go on from there and get just a little schooling like that for several days 
and as the time goes on it's getting used to it because after all training training these dogs and especially a puppy it gets used to rotation uh, which is the same thing every day for maybe a week maybe two weeks but uh, it's different in the, the, the breed of pups some learn very very quickly some take you know several weeks months I have waited for as, as long as two months to get a pup doing and getting it out round to click sheep it, it sometimes takes a long time therefore one has to have patience when you start losing your patience and there are tempers that have uh, gone shaky on this job especially with novice handlers they, they'll very soon learn if they do the job long enough that it doesn't pay they've got to go back indoors sit down in the chair for for 10 minutes and think where did he go wrong not where the puppy went wrong where did I go wrong if it hasn't done what I've tried to get it to do, there's something there that I've got to improve on. Well, when this puppy has uh, eventually got the idea of running round to the uh, sheep and probably to the other side, and if you've uh, been teaching it to lay down, which it should be uh, answering to the lay down command, uh, you'll give it that uh, command to lay down. And uh, then, after you've said lay down, directly that, you've got to of what we call a stop whistle. I use my, my mouth, my teeth, I use that, but a lot of people have these plastic whistles and that, but there's a whistle on there, the stop whistle, which is usually a one blow, one long blow. And uh, not all that loud, but you know, loud enough for that puppy to realize that there's a whistle there as well. And after many weeks, that puppy will be dropping down to the whistle without saying, lie down. Uh, that's, that's where it started. But no other whistle command, none, none at all, until your puppy has gone right through its training of all the other job that it would come up against. But uh, keep the whistle only for that drop. And when, when you've got it to do that after several weeks training of going around the sheep, you've probably got it, you stand in one spot there to start it off, and to go around left where you ask it, then you walk round to where it stops to the 12 o'clock, and then you ask it to go back, which you give it the other command, which is away to me. And uh, after a week or two of that, it'll, uh, it'll, it'll understand that it's going to go that way to that command, away to me, and stop at 12 o'clock, which is direct opposite you, with the whistle stop of uh, one blast. When it's done that, usually I like the puppy to be trained so it'll stay there as I go round to it, make a fuss of it, when I say make a fuss of it, stroke him and tell him what a clever boy or girl he is, and uh, get it back on the lead, take it back with the word, that'll do. Then we go back, leave those sheep there, now then on the way back, that puppy will look back at the sheep, if he's really interested and doing well, he wants to go back again, so you're taking him away, still feeling very keen, you've not stopped out there too long, which makes him automatically get sour for the job, too much rotation. To be out there with a puppy, working it like that for a quarter of an hour is plenty long enough for the first stages. I've spoke about